Hi and welcome back. In this video we will be talking about thread synchronization using mutexes. In the previous lesson we talked about shared memory, about how threads can communicate by using this shared memory. However, thread communication by itself is not useful unless you have some sort of synchronization. And I will try to illustrate the problem that we have with just thread communication by using a simple example. In our example, we have two threads represented by our red and blue robot, and we can call these two threads Stingy and Spendy. They are both sharing a common bank account, and in this bank account there is the equivalent of $100. Stingy is our thread that earns money and puts money into this bank account, right? It updates the value of the bank account. Our Spendy is the opposite. It takes the balance of the bank account and spends some of that money. And for this example, Stingy will put $10 and Spendy will take out $10. So the way the Stingy thread would work is it would read the balance from the bank account, which in this case it's $100, and it would add $10 to it, resulting in $110. Spendy, on the other hand, it would read the $110, subtract 10 from it, and then update the balance to 100. Communication here is happening by using shared memory, just as we saw in the previous section. The bank account balance is held in a variable in memory that is common between the two threads. The problem will happen if the two threads step over each other. For example, if Stingy reads the balance of 100 and Spendy at the same time also reads the same balance, right? Both of them go to check the balance in the variable in memory and they will read it as 100. Stingy will add the $10 to it, right? However, Spendy will reduce the $10, resulting in a value written back to 90. So even though we have removed and added the same amount of dollars, right? We have removed 10 and added 10, the result should actually be $100, right? Because we have removed 10 and added 10. But because we have this two-step process where we read the balance and we subtract or we add from different threads, it results in this inconsistent state. And the reverse can happen as well. We can overread the result by $10 if, for example, Stingy writes the value after Spendy. This type of problem where you have two or more threads stepping over each other and producing this inconsistent result is called a race condition. And it's one of the hardest bugs to debug or to find out. The reason is that the program might appear to be run, running uh, fine for a number of days, right, or even sometimes longer, and then one fine day it will crash and it will produce inconsistent results. Just to demonstrate this exact race condition within code, I have here created a very simple program that will simulate the scenario that we have just seen on the slides, right? I have created a function called stingy, this will represent our stingy thread and another function called spendy that will represent our spendy thread. They are both initialized as threads, right, by saying go stingy and go spendy. And inside these two functions, we have a loop that runs 1000 times in both stingy and spendy. And starting from an uh, initial balance of $100, stingy will add $10 each time, right? It will read the value and add $10 and Spendy will also read the value of the money variable and it will subtract $10. After doing that, it will wait for one millisecond and then it will do it again, over and over again for 1000 times. Both of them, right? Both of them, they have the same loop. One of them is adding, the other one is removing money. Once they're done from the loop, they both print done, right? They print stingy done, Spendy done. And in our main thread, after we create these two threads, we sleep for three seconds to wait for these threads to complete, and then we print the remaining balance in our money variable, right, in our bank account. Okay, so let's give it a go, let's run it, and you can see that the value here, the result value after we run it, is 60. If you think about it, if we add $1,010 and remove $1,010, the balance at the end should stay 100. However, this is not happening, we have a balance of 60. Let's try running it again, and you can see that the result is completely different again, right? It's 110 now. And again, if we run it again, we have the result of 120. This very simple program is showing this exact race condition that we talked about, right? When you read 
the value and then you update it and write it back without any thread synchronization. So what can we do to introduce thread synchronization? So we solve this particular scenario, right? So we get rid of this race condition between stingy and spendy. Again, let's start from an initial balance of $100 in our bank account. However, this time we are going to use what is called a mutex. A mutex is a simple tool that we can use to lock a particular piece of execution. Think about a mutex being just this locking mechanism that gives you access or not to a particular area. In this case, our bank account. So what we would do is we create this mutex and then we would program to use this mutex to protect our bank account variable. So in practice, what we would do is the stingy thread would ask to acquire the mutex, right, the lock, and if the lock is available, the lock is acquired or held by stingy, right? And then stingy can go ahead, update the value, and afterwards unlocking this mutex. Spendy would do the same. It would try to lock this mutex, and if it's available, it will be held by Spendy. If at the same time Stingy goes to try to acquire this lock, the function call will not return, right? Because the lock is already held by something else, and the thread represented by Stingy will be blocked. It will go to sleep. It will be taken out of the execution and it will be released once the mutex is unlocked. So Spendy, in this particular case, it would update the balance, would put it back to 100, it will then release the mutex or unlock it, and then Stingy would be woken up again, right? It will be put back onto the execution queue, and now it will acquire the mutex, it will hold the lock, and it will now update the balance to a new value. And using this form of locking with mutexes, you guarantee that only one thread will update the balance at the same time. If it happens that both Stingy and Spendy try to acquire the mutex at the same time, you're guaranteed that only one of them will be acquired, right? Only one thread will hold this mutex. This is one of the guarantees that mutexes give you. Let's now jump back into the code to try to fix our stingy and spendy program, right? So it uses these mutexes. And here we are creating an instance of this mutex, right? We say lock is equal to sync, the sync package dot mutex. And just before we update the money variable, we do lock dot lock. Remember that this function will block if something else is holding this mutex. Once we update the money value, once we increase it by 10, we unlock this mutex, so another thread can acquire it if it needs to. And now we just need to do the same exact thing on Spendy, right? We say lock.lock .lock and then unlock after we update the money variable. That's all there is to it. Let's give it a try, let's run it. And as you can see, once it completes, we have the result value of 100, which is the correct value. Let's try it again just to make sure this is not a fluke. And you can see again that the result is always 100, right? We can try it one more time just to be sure, but it is working, of course. So that's a very quick and simple introduction to mutexes. We will see them more in action in the next video where we will describe the problem with our Boyd's algorithm, right? When the two threads are using the memory to communicate, and we will use these mutexes to make it a bit more thread safe.